हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल सुशांत चस्पोई टुडे वी आर एट द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज द इनिशिएटिव वी डिस्कस्ड इन द प्रीवियस लेसन ऑफ इनिशिएटिव दैट व्हेन वी आर एबल टू फोर्स मूव्स एंड पुश द ओपोनेंट दैट इज व्हाट इनिशिएटिव इज ऑल अबाउट दिस इज द पोजीशन फ्रॉम द गेम प्रोसोली मूव वर्सेस ओकेली लास्ट मूव बाय ब्लैक इज क्यू बी सिक्स क्वीन अटैक्स द बिशम ऑन बी फाइव and there is also we can see more attacks on the d4 pawn queen knight and bishop all the three are in the d4 pawn if we look at the position we come to know that white is better developed his center is stronger and black king is still caught on the e8 square he is yet some moves away from castling and black is trying to grab the pawn a bit prematurely but what should white play here Black will get the chance to play e7 and castle, and d4 is attacked as well. And c3 might just allow and d4 when e5 is threatened, and n3 will be just threatened. So that position doesn't look that promising. White realizes that the square d6 is weak, and he is able to find a very strong move over here, which forces the series of moves. Let's see what is that move. White to play, and white what the move. Knight a3. I am all looking move at first, but the threat is knight c4, which is already very difficult to stop. Queen cannot take on b5 because knight d6 would be a fork. And the game continued with the four sequence: knight d4, knight c4, knight into f3 check, almost forced. Queen to c5 would have allowed bishop e3. Queen f3. And now the queen has to go to c7. The point is that d6 needs to be controlled at all cost. Otherwise, and d6, k7, qf7 is winning for white. So qc7, of course, better than qc5, which again allows bishop e3. So the, the first stage of white's plan is complete. He has pushed black and forced him to make some unfavorable exchanges. Now what is left on the board? Are the active white pieces? Bishop on b5, knight on c4, queen f3, and a good castle position means the rook on f1 is ready to come out. Black has only two developed pieces, and move is also white. So white is trying to look for a combination here. So we can say at this point the initiative phase has just passed on to an attacking phase now. White continues more energetically here. Of course, most logical move bishop f4. But it allows e5, and here White has to calculate precisely how he can take advantage of the poor queen position and also the king which is caught in the center. So a very logical move or a sequence of moves follow after Bishop f4 e5, Knight into e5. Now Bishop e5 forced when White has Rook c1, and we see that the queen is driven away from its position once again. And e5 is attacked, and there is some pressure on c8 as well. So black queen has only choice between qb8 and qd6 in order to keep e5 protected. Let's play the moves. Knight e5, another phase where white is again forcing the moves. And at this point, we can say that White's initiative has totally converted into a very strong attack. Let's check some sample lines. After Q D six, Rook F D one, Q E seven. When we see that Rook C eight is very strong, the point is after Rook C eight, Rook into C eight, there is Rook D seven. When we see that Rook C one is not possible, firstly it's guarded by the bishop. And after Q D seven, B D seven, K D seven, we might feel that White has given up lot of pieces for the queen. White only has bishop and queen, and Black has rook, bishop, knight, and the other rook as well. But after Queen D one check, stopping Rook C one, that is why White was not able to play B E five. Q D one followed by B E five gets a winning position for White. Let's play the moves. So after Q D six mistake, Rook F D one. Rook e7, Rook takes c8, Rook c8, Rook d7, a strong move, Queen d7 forced, Bishop d7, K d7, 
and now BG5 loses to rook C1, which would mate soon. There comes QD1 check. Covering the C1 square. After KE6, there will be QD5 check. KE7, Queen E5 check, winning the rook on H8. So the king has to go away. KE8 perhaps, and now bishop E5. Already white is threatening. Queen A4 check, and he can keep the bishop on C3 in order to stop rook C1. And he can win the pawns on the queen side. This position is winning for white. In the game, black went QB8. After the fourth series of moves, now white gets a winning position. Let's try to calculate what can happen. We can see that the queen on b8 is overloaded, protecting e5 and c8 both. So white played rook c8 check, rook c8, bishop e5, forcing black to go f6, and after bishop f6, knight f6, queen f6. Rook f8 almost forced, and here white could have won very easily with the move queen e6 check. He didn't play queen e6 check in the game, but after kd8, rook d1, it's instant game over. There is no defense to rook d7 check. Rook f7 just allows qf7, and white wins on the spot here. Although in the game white played the slightly inferior. We need five check, but the point was if king f7, then comes very strong bishop f4. When we see that bb3 will give a winning position after kg8, bb3, rook f7, white will be up in material plus his pieces are more active. Black went kd8, and now white takes control of the c5 with qg5 check, ke8, rook c1, queen d8. And comes QE5 check. The tactics being after QE7, bishop d7, and after KD7, RC7, it mates on the next move. So QE7 forced bishop d7, king d7 allows RC7, KD8, QE7 mates. So KF7, bishop e6 check. Again, same idea. Queen e6 allows rook c7. Winning for white, forced KE8, and here white can choose between QB5 check, KD8, Rook D1, or the simple Rook C7. White played Rook C7 in the game, to which black resigns here because there is nothing much other than Queen into C7. When after QC7, we can see that white is in a totally winning position. We can say that it was a brilliant play by Rosolino. Only the finishing touch. With the move queen e6 was slightly missing, but we came to know how we are able to grab the initiative when we are ahead in development. I hope you will find this lesson useful. Do like, share, and subscribe the channel. Thanks for your time.